Let's go, girls. It's about growing personally and professionally. What's the one thing that really drives you, that really drives your passion? It's about climbing the ladder or opening a new door. Too many people give up too early on their dream. It's about enjoying your professional journey. I enjoy what I do. It's about keeping things real. So the interviewer is an interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. But I knew that there was something else I wanted to do with my life. I knew I wanted to help people. This is Up or Out with Connie Fife. We love your voice. You need to be on radio. And now... <laughs> Your host, <laughs> Connie Fife. Well, hello, it's a Connie Fife, and you're listening to Up Around with Connie. And I am going to put this on the books, this particular show, because right now we are in the midst of the solar eclipse. Mm-hmm. So I just want to put that out there. So when you're listening to the show in the future, you're going to know exactly when this show is happening. So we are so excited here today because we have so much going on and i'm going to continue to brag about our increase in listeners every week it continues to grow up we're now on i um itunes iHeartRadio, sirius xm we're in the c-suite network and moi is holding the number one spot for the female headliner in the c-suite network really excited about that and we are on over 900 global Hard stations, hard line stations around the globe. That is bringing us to over 2 million listeners. And, and that is just continuing to grow. We have so many uh, more fun things going on. We have our Global Council Women's Network that's going to be launching shortly. And that is for women who dare. So if you dare and you're an executive woman, reach out to us. We want to hear from you. And uh, we want to join invite you to join our Women Who Dare Global Network. And also, uh, um, some other things going on. I just just want to share, again, because I am so involved with the C-Suite Network, we have a an event coming up in September, and that is going to be in San Jose. And it's all about finding those investors for your business. So, hey, if that's what you're looking for, come on out. We have a lot of information there that we're going to be sharing as well. So, back to the show, Up or Out with Connie. And the question becomes, do you have a desire? Do you have the need to build your skills so you can launch yourself up and be heard in the boardroom? Or are you ready to go out and start your own entrepreneurial business? Be that entrepreneurial leader that you've been only dreaming about so you can live where you want to live work with who you want to work with, get paid what you want to get paid, and make it all happen for you. But sometimes you just get stuck and you don't know where to go with that or how to how to even start sometimes. Well, we got that all for you right here on Upper Out with Connie. And let me share our quote for today, and it is from Cheryl Sandberg, which is, being confident and believing in your own self-worth is necessary to achieving your potential. You need to believe in yourself, and when you do, you can achieve your potential. Well, this is Connie Fife, and you're listening to Up Route with Connie. So hang in there just for a few more seconds because we need to take a sponsor break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Connie Five, your unstoppable diva, your host of Upper Out with Connie. I am thrilled to be a headline show on C-Suite Network, where you can grow your brand, grow your tribe, and be unstoppable. We are the hottest podcast for entrepreneurs, C-level executives, and market leaders. And you can hear me each week right here on the C-Suite Network. Also on Conscious Business Network, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, and over 900 hundred stations around the globe. Be sure to follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Be bold, be connected, and be unstoppable. We're back and you're listening to Up Around with Connie and it is time to turn up the volume because we want you to really listen in what we have to be talking about right now with our guest. He's an author, a speaker, a famed high school basketball coach, my favorite sport. He's an autism advocate and he is none other than Coach Jim Johnson. Hey, welcome to the show. Thanks, Connie. Glad to be here. 
I am so, so, so glad that you are here and the work that you are, are doing. And again, I'm very familiar with it. My, my daughter is in the line of work, um, being an advocate for autism, but you're also an advocate on, on a different level. And you're talking about leadership and inspiring people. And you have those six keys to making your dreams come alive. First of all, let's talk a little bit about that story and how you became that coach with uh, your team manager who had autism. Well, I was a high school basketball coach for over uh, three decades. And back in 2003, I had a young man come into our basketball program. Uh, and at that point in my life, I knew very little about autism. But this mm. young man uh, ended up etching a real special part of my heart. He tried out for our basketball team three consecutive years, did not oh. make it, which is very unique because, as I said, I've coached for over 30 years, and I rarely would ever have a, a young man that would try out, if he didn't make it, try out again. And yet Jason, his name was Jason McGowan, tried out three consecutive years, and he didn't make it. Determination, determination, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so it, it, when he came out as senior year after not making the team for two years, he had served as our mm. team manager for both those years. Uh, he still wasn't quite good enough to make the team, but I shared with him as, during our preseason meeting that uh, I'd like him to be our team manager, but because he'd been so loyal and dedicated to a program, I wanted to give him a gift. And the gift, of course, he was very interested about was I was going to give him a uniform for our final home game, which we call senior night, okay. and hopefully get him in the game. And so he was excited. In fact, I kid people that periodically he would ask me about the uniform during the season. And, of course, I defined periodically as about every other day. So he was pretty <laughs> pumped up. And the interesting thing, I won't delve into it, I'll get right back to the story, but um, we were supposed to have a very good team, Jason Sr., but mm. we had a lot of internal strife that I wrote about in my book called The Coach and a Miracle, which yeah. I'm not going to delve into right now, but it was very unexpected. And it really threw our team for a loop. We, we weren't playing very well. But fortunately, Jason was didn't completely understand the extent, but he right. was kind of a rock during a, this very um, – traumatic time in our season. Fortunately, we were able to get it going. And by the end of the season, we were playing pretty good. And then February 15th, senior night came. And with just over four minutes to go, I decided it was time to get Jason in. And so I put him in. Uh, the place exploded. And, and usually I feel like I'm a pretty macho guy. But that night, <laughs> my heart, heart melted because what happened was Jason got a standing ovation from uh -huh. our body. But what I didn't know, what Jason didn't know, one of our parents got this idea to make these placards of Jason's face and give them to our student body to show if Jason got in the game. And they oh. did that. I was so touched that I actually sat down and tears started to fl flow down my face. Uh, the game begins. And the first time Jason touches the ball, he's got in the right corner behind the three-point line. He lets mm. it go. The crowd stands in anticipation. It misses by like six feet. Yeah. So it's not even close. And I kid people, I know you're not supposed to pray in the public schools, but I was praying. Dear God, please help him get one basket. Yeah. Our next possession, he uh, actually has a much shorter shot. And of course, we got to add a little drama because it might be a movie someday. And it hits yeah, the right. backboard, hits the rim, and it falls off. The crowd grows. And I'm thinking, all right, we're starting to get closer. Yeah. And then his third shot was a three pointer. And this time he lets it go and it goes in and the place just explodes. And I'm thinking to myself, God must be a basketball fan. Not only has Jason scored, he's got a three pointer. It can't get any better than this. Right. Wow, well, wrong. Yeah. For the next three minutes, I kid people that he turned into his boyhood idol, Kobe Bryant. And I just, he just started making shot after shot. And the two things I'll never forget about the last couple of minutes is with a minute to go after he made a number of baskets, I, mm -hmm. I'm crying my eyes out. And I get a tap. I want to cry head. here. I got tears. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I get a tap on my shoulder. I look behind me and it's Jason's mother and she is just bawling and she embraces me and whispers in my ear this is the best gift you could have ever give my son of course it touched me so dearly I, I cried harder and then oh, the yeah. interesting thing is you know he keeps making these baskets and the game I mean it's like a storybook ending that our our opponent scores with about 10 seconds it was a school called Spencerport and I want to give kudos mm -hmm. to their coach and their players right. they were great sports <laughs> that night 
but they score with 10 seconds to go and our player takes it out. Normally he throws it to our point guard, but for whatever reason, this time he throws it right to J-Mac and J-Mac's dribbling down the court. The, cr- the crowd is standing, you know, the clock's counting down and all of a sudden he pulls up like a couple feet behind the arc. I'm thinking, Jason, don't shoot from there. It's way too far. He launches this rainbow swish. Oh. I look over, the student body's running on the floor, our players were on the floor, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm living the movie, Rudy, this is incredible. <laughs> and then the definitely, interesting Definitely thing, got a good movie out of this. Yeah, and uh, so I, uh, I had, at that point, I had no idea how many points he had scored, and our public right. address announcer comes on and says, the leading scorer for the Trojans, J-Mac, with 20 points. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, with my math brain, he would have scored 160 if he had played the whole game. Wow. It was really remarkable. And then uh, our players actually put him up on their shoulders, and he's got the game ball over his head. And the other thing I'll never forget after the game and the kind of the post-game ceremonies is that uh, – our student body, I see him coaxing Jason over to where they normally sit. Right. And he's signing the placards of his face. I mean, it was something I'll never forget. It was truly remarkable. And uh, so that ended our... An inspirational story. Yeah, it was yeah. just unbelievable. And the, and the funny part is, uh, just to close the story, is as a coach, I had had a lot of success um, mm. about 10 years before Jason. We started to have winning seasons. Mm-hmm. But my, I had a big hurdle in my uh, in my life as a coach. We kept losing our postseason tournament called the sectional tournament. Okay. Jason's big dream was that he was going to help us win our first section five championship. Well, ironically, after Jason's big night, three weeks later, we won our first section five championship. And, and the Jason afterthought to that is Jason actually came back and volunteered on my staff for my last nine years, and we ended up winning six total. So he was kind of my uh, four minute Mario breaking the barrier down. Okay. Okay. I mean, he was an inspiration to you. I mean, personally, it sounds Absolutely. like as much. Yep. Yeah, wow. Wow. So that has now led you on the path to be an inspirational speaker. And you're and you're talking about leadership. I mean, Jason mm-hmm. alone. I mean, he brings so many leadership traits and skills to to the table that that is just just phenomenal. So share more about your six keys to making your dreams come come alive. Yeah, sure. So uh, it's interesting because I've done a lot of my own personal growth to try to help me as a person, as a coach. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I was actually at, at that point in my life, I was kind of thinking of how I could start to do a little speaking. I had done a little speaking in the basketball world, but not really to the public. Okay. And of course, then all of a sudden I was thrust into the world of speaking because right. I was part of this uh, story that became so popular. Right. And it, I, I love sharing it, but after doing a, a handful of them, I said, you know what? I like this, uh, but I really should have behind, besides a story, I should have some tangible takeaways that people could, could uh, use, you know, after they heard one of my talks. So right. the first talk I did was what I call dreams really do come true. And the reason I got that idea is I, I, I always thought that most people have a dream. But I think many people do not believe their dream can come true. And Jason was such a great illustration that dreams really can come true. That's what I named it. And so then what I did is through my own personal growth and learning from a lot of different people, I said, you know what? There are some keys to helping you make your dreams come true. And so in my one keynote on inspiration, I talk about six keys. Mm -hmm. And they are, the first one is passion. And you know, I mean, a lot of people here and the things I talk about passion is, you know, what do you love to do? Right. And most importantly is, oh, how can you make it a big part of your life? Hopefully it's something that you can do for a living, but at least, you know, do it as a hobby or as a part-time thing, you know, so make it. And for me, you know, coaching was something I loved. And right. what I share with people is when you really have a passion for something, although you're going to spend a lot of time at it, it doesn't feel like work. Well, yet. not just that, you're not giving up. I mean, you right. know, in the example from Jason, he tried out three years in a row. And like you said, how many people would come back year after year after year? Right. And it was because he had that passion. Yeah. He wanted to be a football or a football, a basketball player. Yeah. So, yeah. No, no. So, so that was the first thing I talked about. Then the mm-hmm. second thing is, 
uh, you know, I, I did a, a lot of reading and this helped me immensely when I read uh, Dr. Covey's book, The Seven Habits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I read it, you know, he talked a lot about people having their own personal mission statement. And when I read that book, I was in my early 30s and I, okay. you know, I had no clue why I was on this earth. And it really made me think. And so one of the things I really try to stimulate people in, through my talks and workshops mm-hmm. is that, you know, what is your purpose? Why were you put it on this earth? Yeah. It's the question that you, you you got to take some time with it, you know, and I'll tell you though, when I got clarity with that, my mission is to be an outstanding role model that makes a positive difference in the world by helping others make the dreams come true. And when I was clear about that, it really was my guiding light because I knew what I stood for. I knew what I was all about. Right. And the third thing I talk about is goal setting, which we've all heard of, but I, I found through traveling the country and, and talking to a lot of different people, you know, and working with my players over the years is people have heard of it, but most people don't practice it. And they so I talk about, you know, think it, ink it, write it down, uh-huh. uh, starting some daily disciplines or writing your goals down in a spiral notebook and, you know, really giving yourself clarity as late great Zig Ziglar, I'm a big quote guy, used to say, you can't hit a target you don't have. So, uh, so I, I talk about how to be an effective goal setter. Then the fourth is, you know, something you just mentioned, and Jason's a great illustration, is perseverance. I call it that never give up mindset, the ability nice. to overcome obstacles and challenges, which, mm-hmm. I, you know, I've studied a lot of successful people and, and they all overcome obstacles. You know, there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about oh, that. Oh, there's, there's none. I, I interviewed about two years ago, I interviewed 50 women. Uh, specifically executive women and every single one of them had a challenge that they that they mm-hmm. overcame to to get to where they are today I mean we all yeah. have that that challenge yeah. I mean I don't know anyone that has not overcome some sort some type of challenge in their in their life and if they say they haven't they're kidding themselves right. because That's there's true. always something and, you know, I, I think that's, you know, you know, you talk about, you know, that four minute mile barrier, you know, my right. own life, that barrier of that winning a sectional champion. We all have issues and challenges every day. And, you know, and that's where perseverance. Uh, I, I just finished the book Grit, you know, by uh, Angela Duckworth. I just oh, yeah speak at a global leadership summit that I attended and you know, interesting that she talks about uh, grit of being passion and perseverance, you know, which are two of the keys I've been talking about for a long time. So yeah. the fifth key I talk about is carpe diem, which of course sees the day. And in that mm-hmm. I share three elements. I talk about uh, having your continue to grow as a person, having a personal uh-huh. growth plan, you know, uh, and coming in with a positive attitude every day and having a great work ethic, you know, and I always yeah. talk to people about, I truly believe to be successful, you have to be outstanding in things you can control. And I always say, can you control your attitude? Of course you can. Can you right. control your work ethic? Can you have a personal growth plan? Those are all things you can control. Right. And the last one, you know, I, I obviously coached the team sport for many years and, yeah. you know, working with now many businesses, you know, that people are always wondering, how do you become an effective team player? And that's my last, uh, I, I, you know, okay. Jason was a great illustration of being a great teammate. You know, yeah. he was always thinking about we over me, and that's what. And you know, it's interesting uh, because I uh, never asked the players to pass Jason the ball when he got it in those last four minutes, but because he was such a great teammate and they had such love for him, you that. know, in those last four minutes, he's the only one that shot. And that really goes to what I consider the essence of teamwork. And yeah. And the team came yeah. together with that. That is that that's truly amazing. I said, I, I brought tears to my eyes when you were telling <laughs> the story. Um, we need to take a really quick sponsor break. And, but before we go there, coach Jim Johnson, let our listeners know how they can find you to bring you in to speak to one of their programs. Sure. It's uh, coachjimjohnson.com. That way I wouldn't forget it. I, I do have a little <laughs> team. I have a, a lady that manages my career. Her name is Kate Holgate that I work mm-hmm. with. That's a great job. So we'd lo- love to support you in any way we can. Great, great. Okay, so hang in there. We're going to take a really quick sponsor break. And when we come back, we'll be putting Coach Johnson in the hot seat. Hi, this is Greg Davis. Connie asked me to pop in for a moment to tell you about a great opportunity. Have you ever listened to a podcast and thought, I should be doing that, but I don't know how, I don't know where to start? Well, Up or Out with Connie Fife has partnered with Park Lane Media Group to offer you PMR podcast production. 
What is PMR? Production, marketing, response. The three key elements you need to successfully build your podcast success. For more information, visit parklanemediagroup.com or email podcast at parklanemediagroup.com and be sure to let them know that Connie sent you. You have a story to tell. We'll help you share it. Come to parklanemediagroup.com today and start building your podcast success. We're back and you're listening to Upper Out with WCONNIE. And joining us today is Coach Jim Johnson, who was a, a longtime high school basketball coach. He was blessed to be part of that global inspirational story with his team manager, who was autistic. And he retired from coaching in 2016. And today he is traveling that country. He is a full time keynote speaker and a published author. And Anything that uh, you want to learn about Coach Jim Johnson, just head over to his website, which is Coach Jim Johnson. You can find them there in all of the social media outlets that we have out there. So, Coach Johnson, right now it is time for the hot seat. We're going to ask you a few questions about you. And, and the number one first question is, what is your favorite quote? And you seem to have many of them. So, what is your favorite quote? Uh, you know what? It, it's a great question, and I, I do have many. I'll, uh, one of my favorites, I'm a big Jim Rohn fan, and okay. he, he said that uh, we will all suffer one of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. But discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons. So that's one of my all-time favorites. I'll, I know you're asking for one. So. Yeah, I definitely, definitely love that one. That, that's a great one. So I know you went from being a basketball coach now to being an inspirational speaker. But before you became a coach, before, 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 way before that, did you know exactly what you wanted to do right from the very start? You know what? I grew up in a family where my mother and father were both educators. My dad was my okay. high school basketball coach. So when I was a kid, when I really got uh, interested in, in sports and then mm. basketball became my first love, of course, like a lot of kids, I thought I was going to play in the NBA. Uh, <laughs> but of course, when I got to college and got a very humbling experience where I got cut from my college team, I realized I wasn't going to play in the NBA. Okay. But you know, I always had of, of teaching and coaching and working with young people. Okay. So uh, I, I think, I think um, you know, that wasn't my first thing because, as I said, I wanted to play in the NBA. Right. But uh, certainly something I, I really always thought I would do was be a coach. And, you know, I coached a number of sports, but basketball was my number one love, and I did that for 35 straight years. Wow. That, it is a long time. So now you have your own business. Mm -hmm. And to be in business, we all need to start somewhere. And of course, we all have failures. So right. what would you say was one of the failures that are the paths that you took, which was really a failure to turn into allowing you to find your success? Well, I, I think in my business, uh, I, I was very clueless about the um, speaking business. And as I became a better speaker, what I didn't have any clue about is a process, you know, for lack of better words, a sales process where, right. you know, one speech leads to another. Right. And I was just cl totally clueless. Of course, you know, when I first started speaking, I was doing it on the side. So right. I didn't really have a business uh, thing. And actually a real blessed. I got the, and a huge lesson that I think I can help others with is I was speaking at an event about 18 months after the JMAC game in Chicago. And this mm -hmm. gentleman came to me after the speech. He says, Coach, you have a chance to be a great speaker. I said, Oh, thank you. And he says, You should join the National Speakers Association. And I looked at him like he had two heads. I said, What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and it really opened my eyes because I had been heavily involved in my coaching associations okay. and knew how important those were for right. my personal growth to learn from others. And I actually followed his advice. I took that advice. I joined the National Speakers uh -huh. Association. I've gone to their summer conference for the last nine years. That's where I met my manager. And I've learned so much about the industry. So I, I guess the huge thing I can share with your audience is that 
it's really important that whatever you want to be successful in, that you make it a study. You learn as much as you can. Uh, and I still have uh, my share of failures in, in this business. It's a challenge. I love it, but it's uh-huh. a challenging business. Uh, it is. <laughs> you know, and it goes streaks. I mean, there's streaks where I seem like I'm speaking too much. And then there's right. streaks like, okay, what's my next speech? <laughs> right, right. What am I doing now? What am I doing now? Um, I mean, just like you, I mean, after, after Girl Scouts and I thought, okay, well, I'll become a speaker because I did a lot of that uh, with Girl Scouts. And same thing, I was somewhere speaking and someone said, you need to join the NSA. And I was, and I was like, the what? <laughs> the NSA? And yeah, and we're there probably about the same amount of time uh, because I've been in business 11 years. So I think I'm just hitting my 10 year mark with, with the National okay. Speakers Association. Let me clarify that. Right. Uh, again, learning, I mean, running a national corporation association to running my business, totally different. And, and NSA, and especially for speaking, like you said, it's feast or famine. And, you know, it's, you know, you have everything or like you said, are you waiting? Like, okay, when is the next one coming? But you learn, um, you know, through other people and masterminding with other people doing what we're doing is, you know, how to balance that out and how to, you know, keep filling your calendar over time. So great, great advice, Jim. Um, so what, what do you recall your, your aha moment then in your speaking business when you said, I got this, I know exactly what I'm doing. Has that ever happened yet? Uh, you know what? I can't say, I, I can <laughs> say that I, I've had the moments where like, okay, I understand this now. You know, it, I mean, yeah, I, right. I, I fuck you. I'll give you one illustration. Like when I uh, met my manager, I've been working with her for six years. And of course, you know, they wanted to upgrade everything I did, which it was great. You know, like they, yeah. I do a monthly newsletter. I do a weekly mm-hmm. blog. I, I, but, you know, and they talked about, you know, coach, you got to get on social media. And I wasn't a big social media guy. I'll be the first to admit. But yeah. I realized, okay, you know, that, that's part of the job with speaking. And I laugh yeah. at myself now. I mean, I'm on social media every single day and, and uh-huh. usually anywhere from 15 minutes to sometimes up to an hour. And, you know, it's definitely helped my business, but I laugh because I never would have thought I would have been, you know, people had asked me, uh, Jim, are you going to be on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook every day? I would have said no, but right. yes, I am. <laughs> so, so Gladys, who is my manager, who is listening is probably laughing right now because <laughs> I did the same thing. And she ke- even today, she keeps telling me, you need to get on there more. You need to get on there more. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm on there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then in another, something will pop up, you know, a new app, a new app or new social media. And I'm like, exactly. what? So I, I, I try to stick to the, to the main three um, yeah. and get on there and get on there every day. So what, what final words of wisdom would you give to someone who is looking to take that journey, that entrepreneur journey, whether again, moving up in the corporate or moving out on their own path, what, what um, words of wisdom would you give to them as they're pursuing their path to success? Sure. I would say two things. I think the, the first thing that I've learned is that um, your journey needs to keep going and growing. So therefore, I think you need to keep learning. And I think that one of the, you know, I know I read uh, the book by Carol Dweck about mindset, you know, and, and, mm. and her, she talks about either having a growth mindset or a, a fixed mindset. And, right. you know, and I really always felt you could keep growing and keep better. So I think that's the first thing is you have to keep striving to get better. And, yes. you know, I call it having a personal growth plan, you know, read every day, make mm-hmm. your, your, your car, a library on wheels, you know, on and on. And then the second thing is, uh, and I think we all know this, but we, a lot of times don't practice it. And I'm as guilty as anybody is you have to continue to find ways to add value to people. And, you know, because, you know, people are hiring you people, yeah. uh, you know, if you've got good things to share with them, they, they want you to be part of, you know, whether it's helping them with their business or helping them, you know, at a conference or what, you know, whatever your business is. But if, you, if you're not treating people right and finding ways to consistently add value to them, um, you really tend to fizzle away. And, and that was something I've learned sometimes the hard way is that, you yeah. know, uh, 
you know, so many, most businesses are people business. And if you're not finding and creating ways to add value to people, uh, usually your ship's going to sink, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, and the way of doing business is is so, so different. I mean, and you have to be on social media. You know, you have to be out there. You have to be con- continually providing, providing um content and information and advice and, and the service. So all great, great, great advice. So thank you, Coach Jim Johnson, for being here today. You're amazing and such an inspiration to so many. Thank you, Connie. It was a pleasure to talk to you and uh, we'll, we'll continue to do this. So to learn more about Coach Jim Johnson, just go to coachjimjohnson.com and you can find his website there. And again, he's a speaker and he talks about motivation and leadership and inspiration. So check him out. You, you want to you wanna hook up with this guy. He has a lot to offer. So our time is done. Our time goes by so quickly. And I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for being part of our, our list listening, our listeners, and be sure to subscribe with us. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe. Let us know who you are. Let us know that you're listening. And then also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn because you don't want to miss any of the good stuff. And on Facebook, go to our Up or Out Network page, and we have a lot of free giveaways. We have our morning boost, um, and there what we're doing is we're giving away information. We're giving away content from our guests, from um, other people that are in the network that are providing information so to help you either move up or move out. And also, when you see one of the Up or Out with Connie episodes launched on there, type in hashtag Unstoppable Together, and we will continue to send out some freebies that we have that we're only giving out to those that are talking back to us. So hashtag Unstoppable Together. It's been great being here with you today. Ask yourself if you could do something different to get a different result. What would that be? I'm Connie Fife, your Unstoppable Diva. Until next time, be bold, be connected, and be unstoppable together.